If you thought Intel Turbo on consumer CPUs was confusing, you've not seen anything yet. What's your minimum specification? So if I look a little bit ragged, it's because Intel just sent me their Turbo tables for their new Ice Lake Xeon scalable platform. If you're used to the consumer platform, you'll know that cores will turbo and they take additional power. Uh, processors have base frequencies. And if you use uh, AVX2 or AVX512, then those frequencies may drop depending on how many cores you've got loaded at once. And it's all a bit of a mess when you go to 40 cores, as we have with Ice Lake Xeon. And I've kind of been going through all the numbers, and there are a few turbo modes that Ice Lake Xeon has, which are insane from a consumer point of view, but I can see where they make sense from an enterprise point of view. It means that Intel doesn't have to have so many SKUs available in their stack, though they still have so, so many. Um, but I'm going to go through some of those turbo modes with you. Uh, but let's start with just refresh on Intel's turbo by referring to my Adaptive Boost Technology uh, article on Rocket Lake. So if we start with you know standard Intel frequency levels, I'm going to focus mostly on the first two here, base frequency and turbo boost two. So base frequency, processor guaranteed to run at that frequency, and that's usually within TDP rating. And then turbo boost is, um, it's like a, an energy budget, and it's defined for however many cores you have loaded, the processor will go up to a certain frequency. So here's an example of a consumer processor with just a standard Turbo Boost 2 mode. So if you have one, two, three, or four cores loaded, it'll go up to 4.9 gigahertz, then five or six cores, 4.7 gigahertz, and seven or eight cores, 4.6 gigahertz there. So this is Turbo Boost Max 3, that's kind of like a favored core. So if you've only got one or two cores, then it can boost up further. Um, enterprise CPUs don't have Turbo Boost Max 3 or Thermal Velocity Boost or Adaptive Boost Technology. So, what we end up with is a lot of SKUs and a lot of these sorts of graphs. And you have separate ones for standard instructions, for AVX2 and for AVX512. So I've created a document, which I'll put a link to in the description below. And it looks kind of like this. Actually, yeah, no, okay, this works. So front page, Intel Ice Legacy on Turbo Tables links to where you can find me several pages and we'll go into all these different sort of turbo modes and if you're interested in what turbo is i've got links to all the Enantech articles that i've done on turbo i mean i've done a lot more than that but these are the key ones we've got um, intel's turbo we've got amd's turbo we've got the adaptive boost rocket lake which uh, we just come over and then this interview with intel on turbo i interviewed the intel fellow who basically helped define TDP Turbo and Turbo Boost. So Intel's Turbo Modes, this is the same as uh, what we just saw, Base Frequency turbo, turbo Boost 2. But then we have special Turbo Modes for Xeon CPUs, for Ice Lake Xeon. These are called Speed Select Technologies. And for Ice Lake Xeon, Intel's now decided that all the processors will have at least these first four speed select technologies that uh, that are here, and then a certain select few will have this performance profile 2.0, but we'll go through them. Um, starting with uh, performance profile. So performance profile, you disable CPUs. So say you've got a 36 core, you turn it into a 24 core, and then your turbo frequencies go up as a result, and you get new defined uh, non-AVX, AVX2, and AVX512 
um, frequencies based on how many cores are loaded, just for turbo. Then we have base frequency adjustments. So you take your cores, so say it is a 36 core, and you split it into 18 cores are high priority and 18 cores are low priority. Those high priority cores will have a higher base frequency and the low priority cores will have a lower base frequency. And the CPU will move as much to the high priority cores as possible. So here the example I've given is if you split an eight core into two plus six or a four plus four. Um, there are going to be options where you can split. It isn't an arbitrary split. There are options that Intel gives you. Core power, this isn't one that we're going to touch on today, but it uh, essentially defines high priority and low priority based on power limited workloads. Turbo frequency, again, you split the CPUs into high priority and low priority, but instead of changing the base frequency, you change the turbo frequency. So you get brand new turbo tables there. And then performance profile two is if you can combine performance profile and turbo frequency. So not only can you disable CPUs, but you can also choose how many high priority and low priority cores you have in those disabled options. Um, Intel has a slide on this and I will need to zoom out for it. Um, and this kind of kind of shows each technology. It's a bit badly represented here. Um, but hopefully if I go through some of the turbo tables, uh, we'll see. And then underneath is just the consumer modes that aren't present in Ice Lake Xeons. So let's start with Turbo 2.0. Um, this should look fairly familiar to anybody who's seen a turbo table. So we have the extreme core count silicon start off with. This goes up to 40 cores. You have SSE, AVX2, AVX512, different range of uh, vector um, widths. We've got a, this is a 40 core chip running at 270 watts. So the base frequency, when you have no turbo budget, uh, when you're running SSE instructions, it's 2.3 gigahertz. With AVX2, it's 2.1. And with AVX512, it's 1.8. And you see here that, say we're running 16 cores with SSE instructions, we'll have 3.4 gigahertz. But if we run 38 cores, it's 3.0 gigahertz. And this page is pretty simple. We're just going through each of the CPUs in the stack. So 38 core, 38 core. Um, so some of these CPUs are pretty, you know, managed to go full bore at say 38 cores at 3.3 gigahertz and you lose 700 megahertz going AVX 512, that sort of thing. Um, those are the high high powered SKUs. If we go down to say this uni processor, the 6314U, 32 core, you only lose 200 megahertz on all core. Or if you take this 8358, even though it's 32 core, 250 watt, you can have 16 cores fully loaded SSE at 3.4 gigahertz and you only lose 100 megahertz if you put all 32 cores. Now, all these processors have hyperthreading as well, but that doesn't come into the equation here. Um, 6348, reducing down only 400 megahertz. Or if you take, you know, the smaller 18 cores, 205 watts, you're not losing that much in the end. Um, we also have the high core count silicon. This is the 28 core count silicon. Uh, and then again, similar sort of range. These are listed here. If if the numbers aren't in order, it's because they're in core count order. This is as it was in Intel's documents. Um, I'll also link Intel's uh, document down below if I can find the link for it online. They sent it to us by email, but it should be online soon. And then here, you know, as we go down, I've kind of tried to color code it within an individual CPU so you can see how much the frequency changes. And then we go down, you know, to the eight cores and the Xeon uh, silver end. So that's just standard Turbo 2.0. Now we go into performance profiles. So again, this is disabling CPUs and your turbo frequencies are adjusted. So this is only on uh, uh, 10 or so CPUs. So first of all, we have this you know, Xeon Platinum 8352V, which is normally a 36 core. So this is the same. This is the same as what you saw in the second page. Um, but now you have performance profile two and performance profile uh, third, uh, the third one. So you can either take it down to a 32 core or a 24 core. And you'll see that, you know, some of these base frequencies increase as a result. But that one decreases, but that's because you have a power decrease as well. Um, and you can see that some of the frequencies change. Uh, this one doesn't actually, this one's probably a, a worse example because the power goes down. But this one, 
you you have you know higher raw core higher base frequencies as you go from your know, power profile two to three but you do have you know fewer cores so if you're going all out then you have low performance this enables intel to uh essentially offer the equivalent of different cpus but all within the same silicon and specific customers can ask for this and you can change it in the bios essentially um, some of these features I think you can do on the fly, but uh, most of them are in the BIOS. And yeah, we get even the uh, some of the smaller cores. So here you can take a 24 core part, bring it down to eight cores, and you have you know a more consistent um, performance in your CPU. And uh, that one's pretty that one's pretty straightforward performance profiles. So let's go into base frequency. So this is a bit different. This so instead of reducing your core count, you're splitting your cores into high priority and low priority. And then with that, you're because this is the base frequency option, you're adjusting the base frequency of those CPUs. So good example here is just the 8380. You've got 40 cores. Normally the base frequency is 2.3 gigahertz. You can split it into a 16 plus 24. You only get one option to split here. And the 16 cores will have a base frequency of 2.4 gigahertz, and the 24 cores will have a base frequency of 2.2 gigahertz. I've got a feeling that something like this is going to occur with uh, consumer CPUs at some point, because it allows um, it allows the low core count workload to essentially have that higher um, base frequency. So some of these CPUs don't have it; others, you know, and. The idea here is that you have fewer high priority than you have low priority, so you can get that uplift. Here, the 8351N gets a 200 megahertz uplift. Uh, is 200 megahertz the most that we're seeing here? Yeah, 100, 200 megahertz. And then consequently, the low priority cores go down one to 200. And then you have some more of the uh, other high core count CPUs, the 28 cores and below. And then down at the bottom, we don't get that option. So that's base frequency. Now do that again, but do it with turbo frequency, except instead of having one option to split your high performance and low performance, you have three options to split your high performance and low performance. So this is a very complicated um, table, but I'll go through it with you. Uh, let's start with the Xeon Platinum 8380. 40 cores, normally base 2.3 gigahertz. So your all core frequencies for SE for non AVX for SSE workloads is three gigahertz. Then you have two point nine gigahertz for AVX two, and two point five gigahertz for AVX five twelve. So you can you can choose to split the high priority and low priority cores in option one, option two, option three. So option one is eight high performance and thirty two low performance, and then you have option two, which is sixteen high priority and twenty four low priority. Or option three, which is 24 high priority and 16 low priority. So you have more high priority cores here in option three. And this changes your turbo frequencies. So in no matter what option you get, you your low um, priority cores all have this uh, these frequencies for when you are all core loaded. So your low priority cores here go from 3 gigahertz down to 2.3 gigahertz. But if you have option one, where you have eight high performance cores, so that's eight high performance cores here, then you actually raise up plus 400 megahertz. Or if AVX 512 goes from 2.5 gigahertz, your low priority is down 700 megahertz, but your high priority is up 800 megahertz. And then this decreases the more high performance cores you put in. So when you reach the end here, you've only got a very, while your, um, low priority cores are still down 700 megahertz your high priority cores are only up say 200 but you have 24 high priority cores here um, this is important for say cloud providers who want to use these cpus but then offer some of them in kind of like a more premium setting almost rather than actually partition out full cpus they can actually offer sort of high performance um virtual machines just on say the first eight cores the high priority eight cores of your 40 core 8380 and then in this instance it just goes down the stack pretty much every cpu has this optionality 
So then we get to something like here, the eight core, the 6334, that's already eight cores. So that's already eight regular priority. You can change to a two plus six, a four plus four, or a six plus two. And in, in every instance, you know, the SSE frequency doesn't change. Actually, nothing, <laughs> none of these change. I hadn't noticed this before, really. Uh, if you go into this mode, you lose performance. Either that's a typo or that's just uh, what they've decided to do. But yeah, so that's turbo frequency. Now, the last portion of this is when you combine the power profile with the turbo frequency. So now, not only can you decide whether you want uh, high priority and low priority cores in three different configurations, but you can also have power profiles. You can also have power profile two and power profile three, which will reduce the amount of cores, but then the reduced amount of cores will also have high priority and low priority cores. It's just another angle. So imagine you're benchmarking this 8352Y for a review. So you do your standard benchmarks on just the standard CPU mode. Then you need to do it in um, this uh, turbo frequency mode one, turbo frequency mode two, then turbo frequency mode three. Now you need to do power profile two for turbo frequency mode one, turbo frequency mode two, turbo frequency mode three, then power profile three, where it's a 16 core in turbo frequency mode one, then turbo frequency mode two, then turbo frequency mode three. You've now got 10 different sets of data for one CPU. Or from Intel's perspective, you've now got 10 CPUs for having one SKU on your stack, the effective 10 CPUs. So this only occurs actually on a few SKUs on the stack. But as you can see, there's you know a good amount of variation. So if we take this CPU, the 8352Y, normally a 32 core, reduce it down to a 16 core in power profile three, then choose the turbo frequency option one, which only has four high performance cores. We go from a 2.8 gigahertz all core base SSE to a 3.4 gigahertz or AVX 512, instead of having 32 cores at 2.6 gigahertz, we can have, um, we can have 3.3 gigahertz for the low priority and then 3.3 gigahertz for the high oh, sorry 3.3 gigahertz for the high priority so yeah it does sound kind of arbitrary um intel's document has some issues with some of the numbers here they didn't include some of it so i'm waiting to get those back but that is intel's turbo and you know that's kind of the diagram they've given us, it doesn't really explain much. But what it does mean is I've been going through this all day. I think I got this document eight, ten hours ago to make these tables. Uh, the document they provided, it was an image in a PDF. It was 20 slide PDF and each page was images. So I had to copy out all the numbers. So uh, yeah, 2.3 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz, 32, 32, 32, 32, 32, 30, oh, my mind is numb. Some of these features were on previous generations of Intel Xeon Scalable. Intel's really ratcheted it up here uh, with ISAC Xeons. And I'm ready to go have a nap. What's my minimum specification? I guess what Intel needs to do here is implement proper floating turbo for Xeons. We already have adaptive boost technology for the core i9s on rocket lake and this floating turbo is it allows the processor to try and find the best turbo within the power limit and that's what intel needs to do here they need to stop playing around with having you know these pl2s and turbo windows and just have an opportunistic power window for enterprise what amd does they offer floating turbo but they also offer deterministic performance um, angles, uh, options in the BIOS, Intel could do that. They really could. And this would make it so much easier. Otherwise, like me, you have to go through a 20 page document to find the turbo. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Dinner and bed, I think. Tick tock, tick tock. <laughs>